So I've had the Alienware M18 for nearly a month now. Now we've just launched the review, which I'll put in the description down below, and I've been absolutely loving using this machine. I'm so glad we're finally moving back to some bigger, chunkier laptops. They get amazing performance and much better cooling. Another plus side of it being a larger laptop is the fact that this one has four M.2 SSD slots in it. Now when you buy a laptop from Dell, you can configure the RAM and the SSDs before you purchase it. But because these SSDs and RAM chips are upgradable, I always buy the minimum amount of RAM and SSDs so I don't have to pay their exorbitant upgrade charges. And it also means I can choose the components I want to put in this machine myself. So tonight, I'm going to be stuffing in 10 terabytes worth of SSDs in this M18X. I'm also going to be testing 64 gigabytes of 5600 megahertz Fury RAM to see if this works over the stock 4800 they supply in here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually get inside this laptop, how to upgrade the SSDs and the RAM, and we'll show you the performance before and after all of this upgrading itself. Okay, so let's get started. What we're going to be needing to do this operation is firstly, make sure you've got a decent toolkit. Now I've got the iFixit Electronic Essentials Toolkit. It's not overly expensive, but it has everything I need when I'm working on these laptops. It's an incredibly high quality toolkit, which I want if I'm working on an expensive laptop. You're also going to want a USB stick for when you're reinstalling Windows. Now you can clone, but I do like to do a fresh install on Alienware laptops to get rid of some of the Dell bloat and just keep the basics on here that I want. So get yourself a thumb drive. I've got a 32 gigabyte here. They cost you a couple of quid and put your Windows 11 or Windows 10 on your thumb drive. And what you can also do before you install this is go to Dell's website and get all the drivers for your machine and put it on this actual drive ready for once you've installed Windows to save you trying to download them. Now for our SSDs of choice, I've decided for this build, I use a lot of storage. Not only are games getting bigger and bigger, but also I do a lot of video editing. So I've got for my primary dive, a four terabyte SN850X, which is one of the fastest Gen 4 drives you can buy. It's quite pricey, but obviously when you're video editing, you need that storage space and you want it quick. And for my secondary drive, this is for games, so I don't need the fastest of the fast. So I've gone for a P3 Plus Gen 4 drive. It's a little bit slower than the SN850X, but I'm not really bothered. It's only for loading games. And because we've got two 30 millimeter M.2 slots, on the 4080 and 4090 M18, and also the M16, I've got myself two Gen 4 Western Digital SN740 one terabyte drives. Now in the service manual, Dell does state that these laptops can only use 512 gigabyte drives. In here, I'm here to tell you that's absolute rubbish, no problems with one terabytes, and probably the two terabytes when I can get hold of them. Okay, so let's open this machine up. Now first things first, make sure you power down your M18. Once it's fully off, and unplugged, put it upside down on your desk. Now I use a large mouse mat underneath the M18 just so I don't scratch it. And then you need a decent Phillips screwdriver to undo the eight Phillips screws on the base of this laptop. Now the front left and right screw on this laptop are actually captive and help push the base plate away from the laptop. So when you've undone these screws, you can use a pry tool to slowly prise across the base of that panel to lift it away. It was quite stiff the first time I did this, it's well held on, but just take your time lift it out and it's nice and easy to do. Once we're inside, first things first, unplug the battery so you don't do any damage. Now I want to start by installing the SSDs. First things first, I'm going to remove the primary drive that came in my Anywhere M18. I bought just the five terabyte SSD with this drive and you get one heat sink. Now Dell being Dell on this M series range only give you the SSD of the drive that's installed. So you will notice that I only have one heat sink. You can buy yourself other heat sinks from Dell if you contact them or you can pick some up from Amazon. And it can be well worth doing on these Gen 4 drives. So I've removed my original drive and I've taken the heat sink off it. I'm then gonna put in my new SN850X. Now the good news with this M18, although the drive sit quite close to the laptop base, it's only half covers the drive. And because the SN850X has hardly any chips on the back, this does actually fit. Now the only concern I had was some of the chips were looking like they were really coming close to touching the actual base of the Alienware M18. So I put in a very small square of thermal tape on the back of the drive, just so that I make sure that it actually didn't short on the case itself. It actually had that thermal tape in between it. Now you probably don't need this step, but I'm just very cautious. I wanted to make sure that nothing was touching when I put this drive down because obviously there are a couple of chips on the back. Once that's in, I put the heat sink back on top and screw that one done. We have now got our primary drive installed. So I'm now going to install my secondary SSD, which is the P3 Plus 4TB. 
Now the amazing news about this, nobody seems to be able to tell me when I was asking around, but this P34 Plus is a Gen 4 drive that's got pretty quick read and writes, as you'll see in a little while, but it's actually a single-sided SSD. Now, as far as I know, this is the only completely single-sided SSD out there. So you can put this in pretty much any laptop that you like. And this is something I've been asked about for ages, and I finally found one. So this fit in very easily in my secondary slot on this M18. Now, I don't have a heat sink, so I'm just gonna screw it down without one. Because this isn't a top-spec SSD, temperatures probably aren't even gonna be that bad, which we will check in a little while. Next, I'm gonna install my two M.2 2230 SSDs. These are the Western Digital SN740s. Now, with all of these components, I'm gonna put a link in the description down below, but these 30 millimeter drives are very difficult to get hold of. In the UK, I had to find some on eBay, so I'll put a link to my eBay seller in the description if you're in the UK. But if you're in America, on Amazon, they do have the Sabrent equivalent of these drives, which are highly rated uh, and are actually available on Amazon, so you get backed up by the Amazon uh, No Quibbles returns as well, which is handy. Unfortunately, there's nothing on the UK Amazon. So I got these off eBay and these are working perfectly. So install these both into the 30 millimeter slots and screw them down. They'll do provide the screws for all of these SSDs, just not the heat sinks. So that is now all four of our drives populated. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is install my memory. My M18 came with 16 gigabytes of 4,800 memory. So we're gonna quickly pop those out. So lift the protective shield away from the RAM cover to expose your RAM slot and you'll see that you've got the two metal retaining pins either side of the RAM slot. If you pull those away from the chip slightly, the RAM slot will pop up and you can now slide it out of the machine. Do it for both of the RAM chips and just note which way around they were installed. You're gonna to need to do the same with our new RAM. Then I'm gonna take my Kingston Fury 5006 megahertz RAM kit, and this is the 64 gigabyte version. So this is the maximum that we can put in this laptop. Now Dell only provide 4,800 megahertz RAM, and I know there is a problem with high-speed RAM with these 13th gen. If you put 64 gigabyte, I don't believe it will run at 5,600, but it should give me 5,200, so we're gonna try that. But if we put in 32 gigabytes, you should run at 5,600. So take your first RAM chip, slot it in at 45 degrees into the socket, make sure you see the actual notch fits the RAM to the actual DIMM slot. Once you've seated it into the dim socket, push it down, the retaining locking arms will clip into place. You'll hear a nice satisfying clunk as it's locked in place. Then do the same for the second chip and you're now good to go. So now we've installed our RAM and we've installed our SSD. First thing we need to do is plug our battery in, screw the base plate back on, plug it in, and we're gonna give it a try to start it up. Now, when you first start the laptop up, having done these upgrades, don't be concerned that by pressing the power button, it may take a fair few seconds to start booting. For some reason, with the last couple of years with Alienwares, they do take a long time to initialize when you've inserted new RAM into these machines. Once it's finally initialized and starts to boot, it will tell you that the RAM configuration has changed. Enter BIOS at this point. You'll see all of your new components are installed in the BIOS. And the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna change the default setting for the SATA SSDs from RAID to AHCI. Now, if you want to, you can actually create some RAID arrays. This is something we will probably look at in a later video. But in this video, I'm gonna make it nice and easy. We're gonna have four separate drives to actually use. So now that we've set the BIOS to AHCI, we're gonna save those changes, and we're gonna boot from our Windows 11 flash drive. So with the flash drive in our USB port, it will automatically pick that up as the first drive because there's no operating system currently installed on here, and it will take us through the Windows 11 installer. They've made it so easy to do a fresh install these days. We follow the prompts. Now the first thing we wanna do is actually choose our SSD. So when we come to the list of drives, we find our four terabyte SN850 in our list. I click it and then I choose this drive to install the operating system. Then follow the prompts right the way through, entering your Microsoft account and setting up your user preferences. And it'll take you through a fresh install of Windows 11. Now from here, if you've collected all the drivers from Dell's website beforehand and put them on your flash drive, just install them one by one and you're up and running. If not, plug in an ethernet cable, Go to Dell's support website, which I'll put in the description down below. Download the drivers for your machine. And that's it. We've now got our machine up and running with a clean Windows 11 install without any Dell bloat. The only thing I would probably put on is Anywhere Command Center if you want to use it. But there's also another alternative to Anywhere Command Center, which I'm gonna be looking at in a future video. Okay, so now that we are up and running in Windows, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to need to initialize the other drives because only the SN850 is gonna be installed in the system with the Windows 11 on it. We now need to go to disk management 
and it will instantly pop up and tell you that you've got new drives to be initialized. Make sure you do initialize those and then right click on each of the drives in disk management, choose simple partition, just follow the prompts, give each of the drives a name and you're done. And then if you open up device manager, you will now see your four terabyte drives installed. What a difference from my five, 12 gigabytes I had when I initially bought this laptop. So I like to test all of the drives with uh, Crystal Disk Mark just to make sure everything's running as it should be. And you can see straight away, I'm running all of the disk marks on all four of my drives. The speeds on the SN850X is absolutely phenomenal. I'm really pleased with the performance of that drive in this machine. The P3 Plus is also performing better than I actually expected, and this will be a great games drive. So I've now got eight terabytes on those two main drives. You will see that the SN740 one terabyte drives also perform really well, which is surprising. I thought these 30 millimeter drives would be a bit slower, but the one thing I did notice is they do run quite hot. Now, as Dell don't provide any heat sink for those 30 millimeter drives, you're gonna probably need to pick some of those up yourself and put them in. Now you can contact Dell and ask for them. They'll probably sell you some, but I'm at the moment trying to source some 30 millimeter heat sinks. And when I find some, I will put them in the description down below. So now we've talked about the SSDs. I wanna quickly talk about the RAM. And the great news is the 64 gigabytes of RAM in this machine is running at 5,200 megahertz, like I suspected. Now it won't run at 5,600. I think that's an issue with the 13th gen laptops this year. I think as far as I'm aware, I don't know if there's any laptops that are running at 5,600 on the 64 gigabyte kits. I know the razor blades don't, and this one certainly won't. But if you put the 32 gigabytes in here, it should run at the 5,600 rated speed. But even 5,200 is a nice bump up over the 4,800 megahertz RAM that we had installed. So I've gone from the 16 gigabytes 4,800 megahertz RAM to 64 gigabytes 5,200 megahertz RAM for a fraction of the price of choosing it from Dell. And when we run some benchmarks, you can see there's a really nice boost in the ADA 64 memory test. And also benchmarks like Geekbench 5 also show a nice increase in the single and the multiple score by moving from that 16, 4,800, moving to that 64 gigabyte, 5,200 megahertz. And then even when we run a few gaming benchmarks, we've got a nice boost in Firestrike. And we also got a healthy boost in the CPU bound game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider making it, for me, well worth the investment upgrading to the higher speed RAM. I also do a lot of VMs and video editing, so I needed that 64 gigabyte. Now, as I mentioned, all of the links to these products will be linked in the description down below, just in case you wanna pick up the same ones that I've used. If you've got any questions, pop it in the comment section down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, thank you for watching.